Hi guys, welcome back to Mkaza. As you can see from the... Okay, no, never mind. There's no jet there. But uh, if you trust me, you know that there is a water jet there. And that means we're in Geneva. And we're here to film my friend, Marc Montagne, who works at Vachon Constantin, but most of all is a pretty great mind of watchmaking. Long-term friend of mine, always helped me with everything. So please come with me around Geneva. We're gonna film his collection and see his story. We're there. Finally. Finally. <laughs> Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Great pleasure. Uh, in Geneva? First time in Geneva, yep. shooting here together. Yeah. First time for usually in Geneva, no? No, I've done a few before. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. So, we've met long time ago. Five years ago, here in Geneva as well. Yeah, the first, I think it literally was the first event, event for Red Bar in Geneva. I it think. was the first indeed, not so far from, from here actually. Yeah, true. We had some drinks and uh, other watch collectors, so it was a, a nice evening. And you were already at Vacheron? Um, I don't know, maybe I was. I just started at Vacheron or I was still working at Gégard Le Coultre uh, back then. I think you were already at Vacheron. So, uh, yeah. But uh, if I think about you, it's not just Vacheron. I mean, you are for Vacheron, it's, I, I'm so bad at this, so I, I'll let you say it out loud. Uh, no, I'm, I'm working indeed in the digital department for Vacheron, looking after uh, digital marketing and uh, e-commerce. Okay, and I think you're doing pretty great, by the way, with digital, like, like the whole digital and social media. Is you can cool. really tell that the, um, I mean, the digital field for watches has grown for other brands like uh, massively. So, uh, so indeed, it's nice because it's like a way of being able to catch up with all collectors throughout the, the world. So it's uh, super exciting and it's been going on crazy uh, with watches. You're the li living proof of that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have a work if not, if we didn't <laughs> exactly. have the whole, the whole, you know, watchmaking field growing a lot. So much has changed, but you were telling me, when did you start? That's the first question. I mean, I'm almost for everybody, but when did your passion start for watches? I think I could not tell like one moment, you know, it's, okay. it's always been there, you know, I've always enjoyed uh, having a, a watch on the wrist. So it, it used to be like those small uh, watches for kids, okay. you know, when you would actually learn how to read time with those kind of watches. Then growing up, I was um, still into those quartz watches. I was looking for watches that had the most gadgets, you know, like buttons, the alarm, you, you could put the, the, the light, you could, uh, you had a chronograph or what, okay. whatever uh, you could have in terms of a feature. I was excited by, by this. And, um, and then I think growing up, I was looking for something a bit more refined, maybe a bit more luxurious as well. And this is where I came into um, mechanical watches. I think I was around 20, maybe a, a okay. bit earlier than that. And I remember, like, I realized that, um, you know, I, I got exposed to um, uh, automatic watches and I felt it was like crazy. And then I realized that they were before quartz watches. For me, I thought it was the future. You know, it was like so advanced. It should have been created just a couple of years before, yeah. you know. It was much more impressive for me than a quartz watch, you know. True. <laughs> but uh, it appeared it was uh, done much before. So this really um, amazed me and um, it got me really seriously, I would say, um, into watches, yeah. But did you always have in your mind, or I mean, from the first moment you actually got into finer watches, that you wanted to work? In the watch no, 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 because I was too young. I had no idea what um, I was going to do with my professional life. Um, no, it, it just happened like this. Like you, I did um, engineering school. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, I started having uh, my first jobs, um, internships, jobs, uh, started my own company, etc. And then at some point I realized I was 24, something like this, I think. Uh, that actually, yeah, I, I wanted to work in the, in the watch industry, you know, I mean, you could work in tech. I mean, tech was here to stay, you know. I could, yeah, sure. I could work there anytime, you know. Um, but uh, watches was more exciting and I felt I should try, you know. And if I was not trying it early enough, then I would go into a different path and it would have been over, you know. So I um, uh, sent a spontaneous application to uh, Gégard Le Coultre. Um, which I love, you know, I, my grandfather had a, a Gégard Le Coultre watch, which I inherited for my 20th birthday. So I had this emotional connection with the brand, obviously. And I just send um, uh, my resume and say, OK, I'm Mark. I, I know how to do this and that. I'm into watches. I'm into digital. <laughs> Let's meet. You it know? happened. And it happened. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
So it's wow. There. You know, it's one of the questions I've got asked the most, like how can I work in watchmaking? I actually get asked the, the question a lot myself, uh, obviously. It's, it's funny for me to, to answer because, you know, when I tell my story and I say that it was a spontaneous application, people are going to ask me, well, does it really work? And I'm like, that's yeah. the only way I know, <laughs> you, know? you know, so, um, so I guess it works. Uh, for you, it did? It did. And then, you know, now that I'm hiring people, I can see uh, it from the, um, from a different yeah. perspective. And what I like with the uh, industry and what I always say for people um, that are looking to work into the industry is that there's like so many ways to work for the industry. Of course, you can work at a, uh, for a brand, but you can also work for, I don't know, like auction houses. Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know, there's media around uh, watches, obviously. You're a good example for that. There's uh, boutiques that are selling watches, multi-brand resellers. There's, there's like so many things that you can do. And also within each brand, there's literally all the kind of jobs you could think of that are represented in a brand. If we're talking of a, a big uh, manufacturer, whether it is, I don't know, like marketing, communication, events, yeah, sure. PR, production, sure. engineering, customer service. You sure. it, you know. Do you think like being now with a perspective of an insider, let's say of an actual big brand, do you think that passion matters even for you like hiring someone? Do you look at it? So what I've, uh, came to realize, you know, when you start in the beginning, you're like, okay, I'm, um, I'm like super passionate and everyone must be like me. And then you realize, no, there's of course super passionate people sure. as well. And there's, let's say, regular people that are enjoying the, their work, of course, but that are not like completely hardcore around watches, right? And then I came to a realization that if you would be working only around geeks, like ourselves. Maybe too much. Too much, you Maybe know. Too much. Right. <laughs> too much. Yeah, yeah. Even though I love engaging with geeks, I'm one myself, of <laughs> course. Um, it, it might be a bit complicated if you're talking about like running a, a business. Yeah, company. yeah, yeah. We so, will always, always be there and looking at new yeah. stuff like, wow, well, cool. And you it? can have like also like super um, definite opinion around things because you get so emotional around, uh, sure. around it, of course. That's true. So um, what I realized is that it's more like, um, I would say, interesting to have like a balance in terms okay. of, of profiles. Of course, if you have the passion for it, it's so good. It's better health. Of course, yeah. it can help. But what is more important, I would say, is like an understanding and a curiosity for this okay. field, generally speaking, you know. Okay. So, um, so yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Let's see some watches then. Perfect. Yeah. You told me you brought something from your... You've asked me to, to, uh, to bring a few yeah, pieces sure. from, uh, from the collection. I'm asking this just because you mentioned a watch from your grandfather. Yes, and I, I have it here. I, I do have it here. Yeah, so th that was, that was my, my idea in mind. And I was always been curious about seeing your collection because you've told me a lot about watches. I remember you... You and Benjamin having an actual like watch that you wanted to buy together. Benjamin is a friend of ours for, for those who don't know. Say hello to him, by the way, <laughs> if you're going to see this. And it was super cool to me to do this with a friend of yours, but having this type of relationship with watches. Like you, you're into them, but you're critique to them. And I mean, I see you as super knowledgeable. So. Super Please. knowledgeable. I don't know, but I um, I have a few uh, pieces indeed that uh, that I enjoy. I've brought a selection of, of pieces that are uh, that have like a special connection, I would say, uh, to to me. So um, let's start actually with the the first one here. So this is uh, the the Le Coutre um, from my grandfather that uh, we mentioned. Let Super. Me take it from here. Like this. Is it a power a reserve or? It is a power know? reserve okay. indeed. So I think. It was actually the first yeah. watch with um, automatic movement and a power reserve. Okay. I might be wrong, but I think it's actually the case. Uh, so it's a Ooh. stainless steel um, case. What I like is that the dial uh, has this kind of tobacco shade a bit, but it used to be much paler, you know, it's just the way it, it aged. Yeah, with Breguet in this as well. Indeed, indeed. And uh, almost like Count de Vache Lux. Uh, so, um, so yeah, it's a um, bumper movement, so you okay. can feel it, uh, you know, if you're, yeah. Yeah. yes, Ooh, so it's, super. it's funny but because you, you feel it when you're wearing it on a wrist. Yeah. So, um, so it's, yeah, you know, it's there, you know, it's, um, it's always nice. And I've always enjoyed, um, uh, having, um, even though I haven't chosen it, but uh, having a power reserve, um, I don't know, it's, for me, it's uh, like a convenient, um, complication. Some people say, well, it's completely useless if it's an automatic movement. But I'm like, no, because when you uh, put it aside, you know True. when you need to wear it or just simply wind it, you know. 
True, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I love a lot the contrast between uh, Hans Indus's and a stainless steel kiss. Yes. It's an amazing. Maybe it's a Borgel one. I have no idea. This I don't know. Don't know, don't know, don't know, but it looks really, really cool. And are you into vintage? I'm into all sorts of watches, obviously. So more modern vintage. Uh, I do like vintage uh, that allows two things for me. Okay. Um, smaller size and has small wrist. You do as well. So you understand me. <laughs> and also, uh, if you're not going to those crazy, super hype vintage watches, you can get like some super cool pieces yeah. for great price, actually. True. So Maybe true. I can show you an example. Yeah, please. <laughs> this one, for example. Uh, this to me is it. literally yeah. Vachon. It's yes. literally, you say Vachon way better than I do, because you're <laughs> French, I'm not, but still it's, it's, it screams it. It does a bit indeed. Um, so it's even smaller th than this one. Yeah. But uh, so two tone with those tear uh, drop uh, shape lugs. What I like is that it has like the signature Vacheron et Constantin, uh, which in the modern pieces you just have Vacheron Constantin, obviously, still Geneva, which you still have, I mean Genève, which you also have with the modern pieces. Uh, so but it's super um, nice piece. I got it at auction. I actually gifted it to my girlfriend, but I take it a lot of time uh, myself. You know, I just love the piece. She does wear it often as well, but... Just um, an excuse, huh, gifting. Right, you, you understand <laughs> me. Uh, but yeah, th that's, uh, wow. that's it. So this is why I enjoy um, vintage um, as well. So because cool. you, yeah, you get to find these pieces for super cheap. This is called, it's an indelible dial. Maybe it's called like that. Because it's the one that never, never fades. This, I, you, you know better than myself. Uh, yeah. No, no, should be that because you know it's a little bit. Uh, um, it's kind. Of, it creates kind of a step mm. with the whole with the whole tile. So good, and it's an actual two tone. Yes, which is impressive because now they're pretty, like back to the back yeah. to fashion. And it's funny because. I was never so much into uh, two-tone watches. I'm not going to say I'm uh, into two-tones right now, but f on certain pieces, I find it brings kind of something. And on this one, it, it works pretty well. So I yes. tend to enjoy it. It does. And it's a 31, maybe? 32 I would say more? 31, yeah. Yeah, and you wear it? Of course I do, yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. And what's the reaction on people's faces? Well, the thing is, I have a small wrist, so I okay. think it helps. It does not uh, look like so unbalanced. And also, I mean, it was um, a period where those kind of watches were also True. worn by men. Maybe this I one is 33. Maybe okay, this yeah. one is 33. Could be. Don't know. But uh, yeah, uh, I can't Feels remember nice. actually. But um, it works well, and people are attracted by the, the vintage design because it, it, it strikes. And um, I was uh, talking with uh, actually um, a colleague uh, at work. And uh, I was telling him, well, what's your next uh, watch going to be? And he told me, well, actually, I've seen you wearing this. I might get one into this kind of uh, uh, vibe because, uh, yeah, they're, they're enjoyable. So um, Yeah, they are. So cool. So, so cool. Thanks for that. But I've seen you doing much more in watchmaking than just work for a brand and collecting. How, like, what and, and how did you get to this? Uh, so I guess you're mentioning um, the Toolwatch uh, application that yeah, uh, on one side. I, I built. Uh, so Toolwatch, uh, maybe for people that don't yeah, know, sure. um, is um, an application that allows people to measure the accuracy of their uh, watches. So it's, it's obviously free, it's easy to use if we did our job correctly. Uh, and we have yeah, kind of a lot of, I think, 150,000 users are wow. using it. And yeah, wow. no, no, it's, you know, what I like, I like watches. Okay. And my professional skills are into building digital stuff, you know, in okay. e-commerce and stuff like this. And um, and so it was a good way, like building my own app with some friends. I did not do it myself alone. Um, uh, it was a nice way of connecting two things, you know, like my passion for building digital products and also obviously my bigger passion for, for watches. Watch. So I did um, to watch um, a couple of years ago. More recently, um, I did um, another application called Watch Auction HQ, which is a simple database of watch auction results. Because I got this one at auction, and you know I'm always into auction. Right now, it's auction heat season yep. here in, in yep. Geneva, so I'm always browsing um, auctions, and I've always felt that it's hard to get access to um, the results of yeah, past the auctions. Auction. You know, yeah. so I built it to myself for myself, and uh, and opened it for uh, for anyone that cares. And uh, and also for um, your uh, French um, listeners, and I know you understand perfectly French as well. 
I um, uh, host a, a podcast called Répétition Minute, yeah. which is a French podcast around uh, great name, watches. By the way. Yes, great, great name. complication. Great, great name, yeah. yeah, great one. That, that, that is what really gets me every time because you do so much stuff. And I, I think like knowing you a little bit better, I mean, you're always perfect. You do things in the best way possible. That's right. <laughs> no, but you, you happen to somehow. Thanks. I don't know how. I would love to. <laughs> Do it myself as well, but uh, but yeah, and that's what I what I, what I wanted be also people to, to know is that you can do more, and always more, and always more even about your passion because you actually created. I mean, I think there are also opportunities for you. I mean, you have your job, but it's obviously I think the app mostly, but. All I mean, that creates. It's it's a great. I mean, it creates relationship. You know, like uh, when you have like so many users, of course, uh, you get to know um, a lot of people. And uh, you know, we're drinking one, and it reminds me of um, of uh, a funny story with uh, Tool Watch. Is that um, you know sometimes uh, I email a, uh, I was going to say customers users, and they or they email um, uh, me, and um, I came to discuss with an Italian uh, gentleman actually who owns um, uh, one yard. Mm -hmm. um, uh, family owned a thing and uh, and we connected and each year I'm like ordering uh, many bottles fr from him he adds a, a few others and, and you create this kind of, of yeah. connection so you know what I like uh, with watches and I think it's it could be the same with any kind of passion actually is that anytime you meet someone that has the same passion you're basically making a new friend you know and so you're connecting with people the good thing is with watches is I, I tend to realize that there's always people that have super broad interest for many things outside of watches in life as well so um, yeah you get to connect with uh, super interesting people and so uh, good and that's it so good so good you brought other pieces i've never literally seen of yeah. them yeah I, I wanted to also to bring Damn. watches that you have not seen me um, yeah, wearing um, exactly. in the past so um actually um, let's um, do this one it will be a, a nice um, a nice bridge uh, so it's um, uh, a reverso, uh, the tribute for 1931. Oh, that's the one. That's actually the only reverso I would, more than one, I would ever get in Black Tile. Yes. Um, so th it's it's a funny story because um, so it was launched in 2011. I was okay. still for the 80th anniversary true, of the true. house. I was still um, have not engraved it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will come. It will definitely with? come. It will definitely. Yeah. With with. Um, so I was thinking maybe I would take like the, um, I don't know how you say it, like the sign of Paris, you know, like the okay. emblem of Paris, yeah. uh, or my initial, so I'm still debating on both. MM? Yeah, yeah. I love the profile. Yeah. It took me like five years to get to the conclusion it's yours initials. Yes, my initial uh, is MM and this is my Instagram handle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> As well, yeah. And so um, it was launched in um, 2011 for the 80th anniversary. I was studying engineering um, at, the, at the time. And uh, I uh, went with uh, with a friend actually. So we were in Paris. Okay. Uh, a, f a friend who was also a student uh, at the same school, and uh, and we came to uh, to Geneva to try watches, and in particular to try this watch. Um, and I was saying to myself, well, one day I will get this watch, you know. And I had no idea that I would be working for Jean Le Coultre, I don't know, like three years or, wow. or so uh, after that. And I eventually got the opportunity to acquire the piece. And my friend uh, got it from his wife for no his way. wedding. No way. So we have the same. Uh, Did wife. she know about the story? Yes, yeah, she knew. She knew. She knew. Of oh, course. okay. Yeah. Okay. I would have thought randomly. No, no, no. She, she knew that he Dude. really li li liked uh, this uh, watches. And so we arranged it. And, uh, with the Casafagliano strap. Right? So this was added after. It okay. came with a regular alligator uh, okay. uh, strap. And um, it was, uh, this was a gift uh, from a, a colleague, actually, that um, uh, was super uh, nice to give me this uh, Fagliano strap. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I think it's the best. I mean, Reverso is the best watches nowadays, I think, from most iconic, for sure. Yeah. But this one being the, the absolute best to me, literally. I like it because you, you have like the aesthetic of the vintage model. You yeah. have like a more modern um, uh, case size. Uh, I like how it does not have uh, written Gégère Le Coutre on the Delft, just Reverso, but you don't need anything else. You know it's a Gégère. Uh, super elegant and uh, yeah, just love the piece. Works well with a tuxedo as well, I think. Of All course. black. Yeah. Maybe no, not so with the strap, yeah. however. Yeah, but, not uh, brown. Not, not, not yeah. brown as much, maybe black. Yeah. But yeah, so sleek. Yeah. Oof, dude. Yeah. It's really, it's really something that I, 
Thank you. It's the first time I see it in a medal. Yeah. First time yeah. ever. It's discontinued now, so uh, I know. you don't see them that, that much. I know, I know, I know. It's a pity. That's a real pity. Uh, and that looks absolutely vintage. Like absolutely. Apart from the size. Yeah, correct. Which is not that big in, in, indeed. I mean, it's I could not wear bigger actually for me, yeah. but yeah. Works. It's wearable, yeah. Works. Plus, I didn't know you had a speed master. I do actually. This was the first real one. You know, like the f first uh, super... Uh, and it's an actual, like, special edition, if I see correctly. Yes, yes, indeed. So, um, so... Can I? Of course. Okay, thanks. It's um, the... Um, with the Golden Sea Horse, it's for the 50th anniversary of, uh, of uh, the, the Spin Master. Uh, it was released in 2007. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was... Uh, yeah, 20. I got it in 28, so I was 20 and 28, uh, 2008. Um, and so, yeah, what I like with this one, it, ha it has like all the attributes of yeah. a regular um, uh, Speedmaster. Plus? Plus <laughs> the small detail, which does sure. not break the, everything on the design, you know, it's not like a super crazy limited edition. It feels like a, a good old Speedmaster, yeah. but with this small uh, detail. And funny thing, uh, now I remember, if you look on the back, it has engraved uh, the number of the True. limited. Here which, it is. And it, um, I won't share the, all the, the figures, but there's 6 and 10, uh, which is my birthday because I'm born on the 6th of October. So it was completely, uh, I got it on the 6th of October 20, uh, 2008, and it, it happened, it had this, uh, wow. so completely crazy. Yeah. Wow, wow, yeah. no, wow, fun story. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good to add stories to watches, huh? pretty much. All the ones I, I brought here, um, maybe not the fanciest, but definitely they have interesting stories. I need to, 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 to know the other two then. Of course, so <laughs> let's... Uh, <laughs> Sorry for being like that. No, no, still, of course. Now I'm curious. Um, let's stay with the Black Dow. And actually, I got this one not so long after the, the Speedmaster. I think they made a, they make a great yeah, pair. Yeah, yeah, they make a yeah. great pair. Like, really much. That, that's how I... You know, I built my collection. I was always looking to add something that adds to the collection. You know? Not sure. like always buying the same piece, you know? Uh, but more uh, trying to, okay, I have this one, so maybe I can add something that will be a bit different. So, um, yeah, this is the Submariner. I guess everyone knows the, the watch. Funny story, so I bought it in, I think, 2011, so yeah, or 10, I don't know, like two or three years after this one. Um, it was at a time where you could actually get the watch <laughs> first, and also you could get them cheaper than the retail yeah, price. True. So this one, I got it like almost 20% uh, off or something like this, you know. Now, unbelievably. Like unbelievably yeah. impossible. And I still wear it, of course. It's yeah, maybe the watch I've worn the, the most because this is really like the uh, the watch you can wear on all occasions. You know, whenever you, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Milan. Uh, but you know, like I've been all around the world with the really like, literally. I think in all the continents. Uh, it is the, all the continents. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I would yeah. love to say the same about a watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> will never I've happen, a, I guess. Maybe not uh, South America, but I've been okay. to uh, otherwise the US. I've been into the Philippines. You mentioned Benjamin, our common friend. When uh, we uh, we visited the Philippines together, I was wearing the watch. Uh, no date, yeah. as it should be, in my opinion. No I agree. Right. I agree. I agree. Same Definitely. And I was thinking to myself, like the submariner. Uh, I think it was in 53, created without the date. If you want a Submariner, it needs not to have the date. If you yeah. want a date, you get the, the GMT. You get a okay. date just, or you know, there's other, if you want a Rolex watch with the date, there's other watches that True. are better True. in my opinion with the date. I'd True. rather keep it like super clean. Um, and yeah, you know, and I like it. What I like with this piece, um, unlike the um, modern um, watches, Though I appreciate them as well, but it's really like the best of both worlds because it's still modern in its construction and its reliability. You can do literally everything with it. Yeah. Never serviced. It works perfectly well, you know. Um, so, but it has like this vintage vibe and modern construction, you know. Um, so for me, it's like the perfect um, modern Rolex, yeah. I would say, you know. And not as thick as, yeah. The, yeah. as they are now. Not, they, they made it a lot better, I think, with I agree. the 41. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And whereas even, Mm, less big than the 40 to me. It was way I agree, better. I agree. Way better. Yeah, yeah. But still, this looks vintage to me somehow. It does a bit, yeah. But still, you know. Exactly. You can wear it 
in every continent. So yeah. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a proof of it. No, I love it. And really, didn't know you had this one as well. I didn't see you as much wearing it. Like, don't imagine you. I never saw your sporty part, let's say. Well, the thing is, yeah, it's probably, you know, it's been uh, 12 years okay. I had it, something like this. I've worn it um, a, a lot, of course. But then, you know, like the collection grows yeah, and sure. you are wearing other pieces. Sure. And whenever I'm, I'm meeting friends, I am, um, especially like friends that know watches like yourself, I try to bring um, watches. I, I want to show you something, you know. Yeah, so true, um, true. so this, you know, it's already, you don't, you don't need me <laughs> to bring it to the table to, to see it. So I, I guess, yeah, the reason you haven't seen so much is that I've tried to, to bring other kind of but watches. It works. It works. It works so well. what you have. Maybe, maybe I've been... Like I've been asked so many times, what's the watch that could not miss from a collection? Yeah. Now I ask this to you, what's the watch that could not miss? To me, maybe this one. But you know, know, as a matter sure. of fact, it pretty much has been this watch. You know, there's other watches that I wear that it brings me so much uh, joy. But what I like around this one is that you can literally bring it everywhere. Yeah. Like the Reverso, as much as I love it and the, collect the connection I have with the brand, I want. It's delicate. I, yeah, it is. You know, it is a, a more delicate watch. It has like much more um, mirror uh, yeah. polished wow. surfaces. Um, so I take a lot of care about this watch, all the watches, of course, but I know this one, I can do literally anything. So if I'm on a trip, I would uh, yeah. usually uh, wear this one. Beach volley. I, I played with beach volley with one. See? <laughs> yeah. Pretty bad, pretty bad behavior, but, but still. What's the story about it? <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's a yeah, super yeah, um, basic uh, day just. I mean, it's nothing uh, fancy uh, around the, 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 about the piece. The only thing, is that it's uh, from my birth year, so it's oh. from uh, 1988, and the condition is crazy as you can see. Yep. But yeah. did you look for one? Oh yes, of course. Oh, of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the part. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, bracelet is. Yeah. Wow. No stretch. Wow. Uh, no stretch at all. You can see the lugs that are like extremely you never wear sharp. It. You never. Wear I do wear it. No, but look at the condition of all the other watches. They're great as well. It's hard to find, but then if you take care of it, it should remain. Pretty I want like to learn from you, man. I have to learn <laughs> from you. you. You take good care of the things you have. I must. I must. Yeah. <sighs> Is it the Parisian mentality? No, I think it's, I've put like so much thought into, um, into finding it. It was okay. complicated, you know, honestly, uh, like to find one in good condition uh, with the papers. Um, yeah, super sharp. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know, when you find such um, uh, a treasure like this, you just want to take care. And let's be honest, we're living in Geneva, you know, it's not like a crazy adventure here. <laughs> Things are quite cool, so yeah. But how is it for you to live in Geneva? It's my cliche question and it's not like, yeah, it's for you guys, for sure. It's obviously for you, but more for me. <laughs> I've never decided if I wanted to live there or not. I think I've asked you like six times about it, but so still. So what I always tell is that, um, so I'm coming from Paris and the yeah. mistake would be to compare Paris to Geneva because th those are completely different cities, you know. Sure. And um, if you know why you came for Geneva, which for me is watches, and you get to enjoy the city for what it is, which is an extremely enjoyable city, then you don't compare it and you live the thing and it's extremely enjoyable. Plus it has a lot of uh, upsides like, um, the city is quite small, so you can do it by walk, a bit like in Paris, you know, like it's a city that you, I enjoy walking and you can do it here, you're by the lake, so it's extremely enjoyable. And, where you, and when you're into watches, there's literally everything, you know, like um, uh, happening here, like the, the auctions that are happening here, like they're like 100 meters, one from another, you know, it's, it's all in the same neighborhood. You, get, you have like all the dealers, uh, many brands, I mean, Vacheron, obviously, uh, Patek, Jour, Nacrivia, there's a workshop. Uh, I mean, there's uh, so Rolex has also a facility here. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of um, places. Bien is another uh, big place. The Valet Jou is another big place, of course. But if you're looking of a more urban kind of um, city, then, then it, it is it. And um, it's also like extremely well connected with transportation. Yeah, like, uh, true. You know, actually, we, we met in uh, Milan last month. You know, I, yeah. I happened to be there for, yeah. uh, for Easter. And uh, like we, we took the, the train, it was like four hours or so. You know, it's yeah, direct. super easy, super easy. Train to go to Paris as well, the um, airport as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's extremely yeah. nice. But then you have uh, also a wonderful city and a country. So, uh, I mean, I won't blame you for saying uh, in Milan. <laughs> it's a great place as well, you know. Don't know, don't know. It's way less safe, but still, apart from that, it's pretty. You don't have the lake. 
which is you have the food and the food i must say in milan was amazing <laughs> better than here uh, there's nice places but it's yeah you I know, mean, it's, no, it's no. watches it's chocolate okay man but geneva not for the food yeah, yeah not right. for an italian not yeah. for the food i agree <laughs> but let's like I mean, I have to really thank you for everything you did in this in this time. I mean, you've always been super insightful to me, and super kind, and always super available. So, since you've been a, like a great person to look up to for me, what's a suggestion of yours for other people that want to get in the business? It's it's, it's hard maybe because there's a lot of ways to get in the business. Sure, sure, sure. But what's a suggestion like something? I don't know, stay committed or whatever. I mean, what would you do if you would have to start now? To start uh, again uh, now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as I was saying, so there's like so many different ways of working into the industry. So I would not necessarily be uh, like focused on working for like a, a specific brand. I think the hardest part, I believe, should, uh, is to get your first foot within the yeah. industry. And for this, I believe there's endless possibilities. And then it's like with any kind of job application, etc. You would get rejected, of course, of course, of course. And then you try, you try, you try. The good thing with Switzerland, if you want to work in um, and what is in Switzerland is that the um, unemploy unemployment rate is so low, meaning that if you want uh, to uh, to apply for a job, ultimately you'll get a job. You know, like uh, I believe since the employment rate is so low, I'm not an expert in this kind of economics, but I believe that there's always like um, a portion of people that are unemployed for whatever reason. So when it's low as it is in um, Switzerland, it means that if you want to work, you're going to work. You know. So my advice would be like. Take the, the time, uh, try, try, try. Ultimately, you'll get your first foot in the industry. Okay. And then it's uh, up to to grow within the, the industry. But there's like so many um, opportunities. Right now, it's, it's, it's a great time to be um, working in watches. I mean, there's like so much passion around um, watches right now. And I see it from my field, which is digital. I mean, I can really tell like when I started um, Vacheron and JJ before that, uh, social network were growing, but they were not as big as they are right now. Like Instagram right now, it, it's crazy. You know, could like, be a job. Yeah, of course, it is a job, <laughs> actually. So yeah, absolutely. And and I remember it's always funny. Like back in the days, not even talking about watches, but even luxury as a whole, um, it was um, people qu questioning, and even executives at, at brands were questioning, should our brand be on Facebook? You know. Wow. Okay. Now. Of course, you're going to be on Facebook, on Instagram, on all the other networks, you know. And I see it the same with um, with uh, online sales, you know, like, should our brand be selling online? Well, guess what? Yep. Your watches are already being sold online. So, so do it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so either you want to participate with that and control it a bit or like, have your word on the, on the topic or you will leave it for the other audience. people, you know. Yeah. True. It's just how the, the way the, the world operates and you might better, and this is my opinion, do it in a way that is relevant for your brand, add service to your customers, yeah, sure. etc. Rather than let uh, Chrono24 or any other kind of watch finder platforms, whatever, trade your watches because this is where your, your watches are being traded. Yeah, and I think it's really a growing field. Like we yeah, can I mean, see a lot more. You can see the interest and you know what we were mentioning auctions and a big part of the purchases done at auctions are being done remotely, whether yeah. over the phone, whether on the website, you know, so, uh, so it's already uh, happening uh, online, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for that. It was my pleasure, Andrea. Thanks for being with me. It's a great pleasure always seeing you. Thank you guys for being with us. Let us know what is your favorite watch and your favorite story. And see you in the next video.